what what kind of person <laughs> has a criminal mind? You might think a criminal does, but no. I mean, they're not all criminals. I mean, folks can think criminally, can have a criminal mind, and be stand-up people like me. My name is Alex. I'm the social media intern for Corporate Cowboys, the podcast, powered by Incorporating Associates, stand-up guys with corporate corporates with criminal minds stand up guys with criminal minds that's how you get by in this business you have to be able to think critically think strategically think tactfully logically has to make more than just sense has to be beyond common sense and it's not as it's not as common as you might think. It's why I have to uh, preface it with being a stand-up guy, being a stand-up person with the criminal mind, because ha- just having a criminal mind doesn't mean you're going to be a stand-up person. You're going to be a, a, a productive one of good repute. You could be a piece of shit. You could be caught up. You could be an inefficient criminal. You could be a sorry excuse of a professional. And no, corporate cowboys are not trying to make excuses for anybody. Corporate cowboys should not make excuses for anyone. Being a stand-up guy with a criminal mind, it does... uh, I'm not going to say it takes its toll on social interactions between people. It absolutely does inform the interactions that take place between people because you'll find a lot of your uh, conversations, a lot of your discussions tend to come back around to... uh, What is criminality? Tend to come back around to business, to politics, to diplomacy, strategizing future interactions, litigating issues between one another. All in good fun. All in good fun. All in the name of professional development with one another. And you can do that. You can do that. Doesn't have to be bad blood always. When you're rolling in a good circle, criticism is welcome. Criticism is welcome. The feedback is welcome. Those individuals who choose not to grow, who are afraid of growing, who uh, would rather deflect any form of responsibility or accountability they might believe they're criminals they might believe they're getting away with with a crime but just because they think they're getting away with it doesn't mean that they've done so cleanly and it definitely doesn't mean that they're stand up about it doesn't mean that they're a professional not at all Somebody I knew once said that they'd much rather uh, <laughs> they'd much rather work side by side with someone they knew was a murderer, a killer, somebody they knew was was a thief, somebody they knew was uh, was an assassin, a dope dealer. So long as they did so for righteous reasons, then a person who does all of the right things for wrong reasons, it's as simple as 
somebody smiling, somebody smiling, shaking your hand, and being a piece of shit behind your back. They're doing all the right things. They're smiling, shaking your hand, getting ahead in life, getting ahead in your life, all to bring you down later. Whereas a person who I already know to be on my radar as as a threat, even if we have shaken hands, if they're on my side, then I know where I can direct that threat to. Otherwise, it's just a threat that I never saw coming and I more than likely deserved. It's a, it's a form of respect. It's a form of respect. It's like when folks say, uh, folks say, don't blame the snake for biting you because that's what snakes do. And I've dealt with many snakes. I've played with many snakes. I've done business with a handful. And yeah, I came close to getting bit. I've gotten bit once or twice. The analogy isn't as clear because uh, one would assume that a snake being venomous only has to hit once. But uh, again, we're, I'm not dealing with actual snakes. I'm dealing with people. So I can get hit an infinite number of times and not die because we're not dealing with actual poison. Though, though there are some poisonous individuals, there are some toxic individuals. And I don't mean toxic in the new age sense of of vibes and aura and and energy a lot of toxic energy no it's just people toxic people they might have a certain pathology about them that makes them unqualified to be a professional doesn't matter how fucking criminal they are makes them unqualified to even associate with them Or the people, the company they keep around, if they associate with uh, with other people or company that's that doesn't inspire trust, that doesn't inspire professionalism, then you know that uh, you might not be dealing with the most stand up, the most professional. You might be dealing with common criminals common criminals a little bit more uh, a little bit more more on the low end of the pay scale a little bit more on the low end of the uh, formalities scale they might not even adhere to common business practice even if they are business people in nature why I'd rather be a stand-up guy first be a stand-up guy first make yourself a professional but experience has shown me the criminal side of life so I'm able I am able to contemplate both sides what is uh, criminal and (laughs) non-criminal I'm not gonna say what is good and bad or right or wrong because yeah even Even criminals can be good. Even criminals can be right. So, my experiences have allowed me insight into the criminal, uh, into the criminal workings of this reality. And it isn't so much uh, an an underworld. It isn't so much a, a deep state. It's just a uh, a social contract of sorts. It's a social contract with unspoken agreements, norms, and mores that 
we as professionals are expected to adhere to. This is what makes up the status quo. How lovely, right? How, how nice to have something as predictable as organizational structure. How nice. When a lot of these criminals want to pretend that they are unpredictable, that they won't be caught up. I'm not talking about common criminals anymore. I'm talking about like upper echelon motherfuckers who really like to think that they won't be caught because they are unpredictable, because they pay people off, because they because they are owed certain favors, certain gestures that they only have to perform that they only have to perform their duties as far as their criminality requires them. And that's wrong. That's wrong. If, if you want to look at it as two separate worlds, and there are some who think they are mutually exclusive, and they're not. It's one and the same. But folks, for whatever reason, think that uh, that crime... Not that crime is a bad thing, but consequences are a bad thing. That's that's the word I was looking for. Folks want to believe that consequences are a bad thing and that because they are upstanding citizens in the community who pay taxes, that they should be exempt from moral consequences, that they should be exempt from moral hazards. And they're not. They're not. They just have... They just have uh, enough money, enough enough juice, enough clout, enough pull, enough push, enough influence, so as to not be uh, so as to not be earmarked as unqualified when in reality they are. And that's all it is. It's it's connections. Connections beget connections. And I, I'm really... The more I learn about connections, the more I learn about structural organizations, formal organizations and their uh, organizational structure, the more I appreciate those connections. How to go about developing them, finding them out, interviewing them. And uh, creating opportunities to get in and conduct business. See, that's my business. My business is identifying connections and rearranging connections so that business flows better. Because again, the status quo, just because it exists, just because it's the prevailing mode of operation for many a industry doesn't mean it's the right way doesn't mean it's the wrong way either there are some uh, there are some forms of status quo that I likely would advocate for and I would support and there are others that are wholly wholly misguided and misinformed Being a stand-up guy with the criminal mind means that you have to be able to contemplate what is right and what is wrong in your day-to-day business interactions with criminals and professionals. It's like speaking two languages. And being fluent in them both so that you only have to say things once. You see? And that's why I hate repeating myself. I'll, I'll say this. I've said this once and I'll say it again. 
I'll say this once and I'll say it again. Do not repeat yourself. Reiterate wherever you can. Reiterate. Because repeating yourself boxes your opinion in. It it legit it doesn't legitimize, it solidifies, it, it cements your opinion. It makes it unchanging, unwavering. And opinions change. Some opinions do change. Not all opinions, like I said, we each have, each and every one of us has a status quo in our own life that is, uh, that defines who we are. It's neither right, neither wrong. It just defines who we are as people. And those opinions can't be changed with evidence. With evidence that's logically sound, that's rational. We're humans after all. We're forward thinking. We're advanced thinking. We're promotionally thinking. We always want to get ahead. We're professional by nature. Some of us just never get a chance to consummate it in life and have it be our reality but we're all striving for it we're all moving towards it whether we know it or not it's like a coming to Jesus moment but instead of Jesus or any religion we're coming to terms with business we are affirming and agreeing on the human conditions that are part and parcel to this greater social contract we call life. I'm just fucking spitballing here. <laughs> You want to find us on Instagram? Do that. It's Corporate Cowboys. You can subscribe to the Patreon and uh, other links. If you want to donate to the organization, keep it nonprofit, as it will be until somebody's six feet deep. Want to wish you a great week. Today's Monday. June 21, 2021. I'm out.